Good afternoon, good morning, good night to everybody who is now listening to us and watching us and maybe watching later in the recording. Uh, this is an international conference on code quality. I, would be, on behalf of organization committee, open it, so it's officially open. We do this conference for the third time. We started in 2021, then 2022, and now it's 2023. So I believe that we already, as organizers, uh, collected enough of experience of how such a conference might be organized. And I am interested to share it with you to do some sort of a retrospective of what we learned over the last three years. So when we started, our objective was to make a good conference. We never wanted to make it like large, huge conference. That was not our goal. Like other, many other conferences which are big and, um, and which you may know about. We never wanted to make it profitable. So it was never an activity for money. We were not looking for that. We had enough sponsors who helped us to organize that. So we never expected to earn anything from this. We always wanted to make it good. And it still is our objective. We want the conference to be good. But only after three years, I think we can look back and say what it means to be good. What makes a good conference? And to answer this question, I think we need to answer the question who we work for. So who is the customer? Who we make this conference good for? So who is the, the, the person or organization, organization who you know, judge us? Is it our authors who publish papers here? We, may, we must be good for them. They have some expectations from a conference. So they, they come to us and they expect the conference to be good. Or maybe we, uh, we must be good for our sponsors. They also have some expectations from us. They're coming to us to help us organize the conference. So they expect something in return. We must be good for them, maybe. Or maybe we must be good for IEEE, the, the, or the organization which supports us and which publishes our papers. We need to be good for them. Or maybe the program committee. These are very important people who we also need to uh, do something for them to be good for them. That's all true. All of these customers are our customers. We must be good for them. But I think, uh, I believe that there is one more customer which is more important than all of these uh, components, all of these uh, sub-customers, I would say. And this customer is computer science. I think we work for computer science. We work for a large community which we can call computer science, a community of people who drive forward, I can say civilization, the humanity in the area of computing. And this computer science community, even though people who you know, constitute this community may be from different countries, or they, may, they could be from different organizations, or from different uh, projects. They may have different research goals, research objectives. All together, I think we are one team, one team which is moving forward. And our role, our objective as a conference, as uh, conference organizers, is to help computer science in general. The question is, how do we do this? We Conference organizers, we're not researchers in, in this role. We're not writing papers. You cannot find any papers written by us organizers published at this conference. We are not doing you know, research and not, do not contribute to computer science while we organize this conference. So what is our contribution? What do we do? I think our contribution is, if you imagine uh, a huge road and the computer science is like a large group of people moving through this road forward, making innovations, making, you know, developing ideas, making new, uh, new projects, what they do. And we are, as a, as a conference, we are, I see it, we are a control point which stays on this road and contributes twofold. We provide twofold contribution through us. These people go through us and we are a control point for them. Control point with two functions. I think we discipline them and we motivate them. 
The discipline means that we as a conference, and like many other conferences as well, the, we're, the, our role here is not unique, we provide some sort of a standard for them. So we provide some sort of expectations of how they need to present their work, how they need to do their research so that the research might be you know, appreciated and accepted by the, uh, by, the, by the community. So we are the providers of standards. Even though our conference is small, I should not say our conference is the provider, all conferences together, we are just one part of this uh, group of conferences. We provide the standards, we provide the discipline of how the research must be done. And second, we provide the motivation. By the motivation, I mean that people who come to us, some of them get rejected. And actually, you will see in a few minutes, I'll show you that the majority of people get rejected. Most papers that come to us, most authors, they get rejected. And, I, and these people who are rejected, they are, uh, they are motivated, I believe. They get the motivation by the rejection because they understand that there are higher demands, higher standards for them that they need to work for and they will improve and come back maybe to us, maybe to somebody else. And people who get accepted, they of course get the motivation. They like it, that they're being appreciated by the community and they come again and develop again. So this is our twofold contribution. Discipline developers and motivate them. And uh, in order to you know, in order to give this uh, twofold contribution, how exactly we do this? What are the technical ingredients of our work? What do we do? I, I see, again, looking backward, three years backward and uh, looking retrospectively of what we've done, uh, there are four things which we do in order to make a good conference, like I mentioned. I hope we, uh, we manage to do it. So first of all, of course, number one, we put together the program committee. This is the most difficult part of our work, and that takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of time. How to find the people who are ready to contribute for free. All of the program committee members, they work for free. They, they freely contribute doing reviews of the papers, and they do a pretty good job. They spend a lot of time. Some of the reviews, the authors who are... Uh, uh, who submitted to us, they know uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of a feedback they receive from PC members and you know the quality of this feedback. So finding PC members is first step we do as organizers. And I think we succeeded this year. We built together a really strong committee, which is, I can say, I, I, I really have to say that, that every year we're doing it for the third time, for the, third time the, PC, the PC committee, the program committee becomes more and more, I believe so, mature. So we're getting more and more mature people who are ready to contribute to our conference. I think it's a good sign for us. Second, what we do, we engage IEEE. So we, every time, this is third time, we involve IEEE in the incorporation support for our conference. It means that the standards of IEEE, the quality expectations they put on the papers are coming to our conference and they are here. So all the authors who come to us, they, uh, they experience the quality expectations of IEEE. So this is the second uh, ingredient of our, uh, of our work. Number three, we of course invite uh, sponsors, universities and a few pretty large companies. We carefully select the sponsors who we invite. We don't just take anybody. You can look at the website. You see that we have just a few companies and just a few universities, and we are trying to keep uh, the quality bar uh, pretty high. So we're inviting uh, quite reputable uh, organizations in order to, again, to, to keep the standard, the quality standard high enough. So these organizations, they just, they don't allow us, I would say, to, you know, to lower the quality bar because we have such reputable guys on board, PC members, IEEE, and sponsors, we inevitably have to keep uh, our quality high enough of the papers which we accept and of the demands we put on the, uh, on the, on the authors of these papers. And of course, we invite authors. That also takes time. It also takes a lot of work. So the, the, the better the authors that come to us, the more the competition the stronger the competition in the conference. And if the competition is stronger, that's an additional, the main motivator for new authors to come in the future, because they know that they compete with, uh, with good authors and good papers. So I'm finishing. I have to say that this year, we, uh, we definitely are, um, we definitely get better papers than previous years. 
And how, why do I say that? Because in all papers which, we, which we were reviewed, only one paper received no accept uh, opinion from committee members. All other papers, at least one acceptance uh, opinion, accept opinion, was collected. It means that it was very difficult for us to select which paper to reject, which paper to accept. So we got pretty high quality papers, but still we accepted only uh, about 35% of all the papers submitted. So only one out of three papers were accepted, which I think it's a good sign in general for the conference. So I believe we managed to make a conference maybe not good, as perfect as we're looking for, but definitely better than previous years. And we are planning to do the same next year and the year after and the year after. So that's it from me. Again, welcome to the conference. You are expected to hear uh, five presentations today, an introductory speech right now from Professor Terechev from uh, St. Petersburg University, and then uh, the presentations, technical presentations. Thanks again. Professor? First of all, uh, I don't like the word, the term computer science. I do prefer the word software engineering. And I will try to explain what does it mean and how it, it is connected with the, uh, the main direction of this conference. You know, I visited America for the first time in 1992. Of course, I knew a lot of uh, mathematicians, uh, uh, my colleagues from different countries, but it was interesting to visit for the first time. Sometimes I was surprised with uh, behavior of Americans with some, uh, uh, for example, uh, to be honest, maybe it's not polite to say, but uh, I'm, I, I don't like American programmers. Uh, you know, we were working with applications of five, six million lines, and every module had 40, 50,000 lines. In Russia, in Europe, it is not traditional. Uh, in my opinion, Americans are, they, uh, they prefer brute force method. And nevertheless, uh, 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 from some points, uh, I was a good pupil from Americans. Everything what is connected with economics, with quality assurance, and so on and so on. And at, just at that time, for the first time, I met the word uh, old quality. Of course, every Russian programmer, every mathematician knows what doesn't mean a good program and what doesn't mean bad program. But uh, in America, this is a standard. Every company has its own code uh, style, special document. Every programmer must follow this document up to very detailed. Uh, but even at that time, uh, almost 30 years ago, uh, I was surprised that code style, how many uh, spaces, uh, how, how to present the program, but simultaneously almost nobody is responsible for real good, real good quality. Uh, efficiency, um, how to connect, how to compare the software with others. And uh, for me, it was uh, bad because I didn't understand why they work in such a bad style, in my opinion. But it gave me a good opportunity to receive money, more than one million dollars every year. We were involved to the projects in the field of re-engineering, especially for banks and other financial software. And Gartner Group three times recognized us the best in the world in the field of legacy understanding, legacy transformation. And so from point of view, I was angry as a professor of the university, but from another point, of you, I was very happy because I received a good chance to receive good job. Because we had to transfer old program written more than 30 years ago in Cobol up to new platforms like Java and C Sharp and so on. And it was very difficult work 
and uh, once my son Andrei Terehov Jr. Uh, received the first prize of American Computer Society in the field for the article how bad is cobalt semantics and how how difficult it can work this uh, cobalt program onto new platforms. And my customers were very angry. They were ready to uh, reject my contract and so on and so on. So I had to go to America once more, one, one more time. As we, as we say, it's Thai. It's very seldom when I use Thai. And I had to explain my American colleagues that uh, my son is a very clever guy uh, because uh, it's really a uh, difficult job. Uh, how to understand all the uh, COBOL program written many years ago. And uh, they understood. Uh, so I, what, why I uh, received, uh, why I wanted to mention about this incident? Because now I have my strong, strong opinion, what does it mean for quality? The engineer gave me a lot of examples of such activity. What does it mean good program? What does it mean bad program? For example, the main customers of our product, Rescuer, the name of our product is Rescuer, which was recognized by Gartner Group as the best in, the, in these fields. The main customers were from India because they receive money to maintain American programs and they understood very quickly what does it mean our product, Rescuer, and when they start a new project for Americans with these six or even more million lines, it's for me it's up to now funny. But uh, when Indians start a new project for Americans, they first of all uh, take our project and uh, prepare some restru restructuring, dead code elimination, and so on and so forth to receive first of all better uh, and shorter product. And only after that, they can uh, maintain it. So I try to teach my students. I'm the head of software engineering chair at this at St. Petersburg State University. And I try to teach my students, and I use a lot of examples of our American activities. The, uh, I, let me repeat once more with some criticism about American programmers. No, what, what can I say? For example, they, they explain me, Americans explain me, that there is no American uh, and Soviet programming. There is uh, American style and European style. And now I understand it much better. I was many times in Germany, in England, and everywhere. I delivered lectures. So uh, I try to explain to my students not to work in accordance with American traditions. I can see that as bad traditions. So maybe this conference about code quality will help everybody, to everybody and to me as well. What does it mean good software? So I wish good uh, results to this conference. I, ha I have a lot of uh, collaborations with Huawei. So for me, it's not very far. And we have a very strong center in St. Petersburg. I know a center in Moscow, and director of this center is my friend. So uh, I wish you success to this conference. I hope you will uh, believe that my understanding of what does mean good quality is uh, better than traditional American approach. That's all. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's an interesting opinion, especially uh, uh, taking into account that uh, our uh, keynote speaker today is a professor from America, David West, <laughs> and yeah, and we <laughs> he'll be able to uh, give some answers and maybe you know somehow uh, explain maybe uh, the the opinion just expressed.